you're an expert at uh, Pathpilot or you're an expert at Mach 3 or something similar, what's it like to switch to something like this? Hi, my name is John. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what it's like to use a controller like this. When I first got this machine, it was pretty intimidating. And so in some senses, this video is the video I wished I'd been able to watch when I first got this machine. And therefore, one of the things I'm thinking about when I'm creating this video is an audience of people who are moving up from a Tormach or a hobby machine of some other type to a Haas. What I'm going to do, therefore, is walk you through the process of starting up, starting a job, and then finishing up at the end. There are some topics I'm not going to cover, such as uh, setting the, uh, the tool heights, etc., that I've covered in previous videos. So let's get started. I don't have an air system hooked up in my shop yet, so I just hook the machine directly up to the compressor. And likewise, I use the regulator on the compressor. So right now I'm just uh, sending air to one device at a time, which is fine for now. So this is the first thing that I do, which is to set the, the pressure to somewhere around 90 to 100 PSI for the machine. Next, I want to turn the power on and then turn off the e-stop. And then this says to cycle the door. So if you watch the cycle door, you'll see that when I open this door, it turns off. Next, I want to hit the reset button. And at the moment, there's no spindle in the machine. I leave it out, uh, which is the recommendation. So the first thing that I want to do is put the spindle back into the machine and then press tool release. So that's uh, all set. And then I want to do power up restart, which will home the machine in all four axes, X, Y, Z, and the rotary. And now it's ready for the next step. I want to do the warm-up cycle. For this, I'd like to use a small tool, which I have uh, loaded as tool eight. So I'll go to hand jog, T8, ATC, reverse. Before running the job, I need to run the uh, warm-up cycle. Whenever this machine is idle for more than two hours, they recommend to run the warm-up cycle. Machines with slower spindles, in other words, ones that have 10,000 instead of the 30,000 RPM spindle that I have, allow you to go, I think, for a day or so before you have to run the warm-up cycle again. Uh, the purpose of the warm-up cycle is to, I believe, make sure that the, the bearings are have enough lubricant and everything is working correctly. So, what I need to do is go to list program, and then head over to hard drive, write enter, and then it's the last program, so I'll press page, page down, and then select program. This program starts at 1,000 RPM and then works its way up to 30,000 RPM over 20 minutes. I'll press cycle start, and the first time I do that, it gives me a warning that the machine is cold and needs to be warmed up with the warm-up program. I know that's true, that's what I'm trying to do. So I press cancel, and then cycle start again, and now it's running the warm-up cycle. Now that the 20 minutes are done, I can start to set up the job. So I'll go back to list programs, but this time I'll press escape to back out of the hard drive and move over to the network share. And then over here, I'll go down to what I'm currently working on, which is, where is it, this one here. And I'll choose, let's see, which one is this one right here. So I have the program loaded, but I'm not going to use it right away. One of the reasons I do like to load it, though, is because I have the list of tools at the beginning so that I can make sure that these match what I have in the machine. I happen to know they, that they do because I have the first oh, 15 tools pretty much the same all the time. I never change them. So that way I can program to the first 15 tools. And if there's something that doesn't fit in the first 15 tools, 
then it'll be above those numbers. But this is all T6, 7, 8, 9, and 12, so I'm good to go. So I'll do a hand jog so that I can, can position the vise to be ready to load the material. I like to move the vise all the way to the right so that I have room in here to hit the stock with a dead blow hammer. The uh, tool is up over there uh, and that way I won't hit the tool by accident. I'm still pretty careful each time I do that because I don't want to hit the tool and break the tool. So then I want to make sure that uh, the top of the parallels are clean. There's no grit on them and then I can put the part on the parallels. This is something where I need a lot of accuracy so I'm definitely going to use the parallels and not the piranha jaws. And so I'm pushing down on this as I tighten it. And you notice that I'm tightening it not with a lot of leverage. This is uh, only about uh, three and a half inches, I think, from there to there. But that's usually good enough for this machine because it doesn't have a lot of uh, power that I usually add. And then I give it one last gronk, as Tom Lipton would say. Make sure it's still on the parallels. It's actually a little loose in the front. Okay. Now, the next step is to find the X0, Y0 position. I already have the Z position for the parallels uh, in the machine, and I'll show you that. Now, the way the coordinate system works in this machine, I've covered in a previous video, but the way I have set things up right now is the offset from the table. Let me bring the tool down so you can see that. So uh, I have the tool there and basically the distance from the tip of the tool to here is what I have in the offset table. And then when I measure the top of the parallels, for example, I use the Heimer to touch off on here, uh, basically record that position touch off on the top of the parallels, subtract those two, and then that's the offset that I put into the machine. So that's how I know the top of the parallels. Because of the repeatability of this machine, I do not need to pick up the top of the parallels every time. So I just have written down the top of short parallels, these tall parallels, and the piranha jaws. So I can just type that in when I switch from one to another. The next thing I want to do, as I mentioned, is set up the offsets. The offsets are in this table here. I'm currently in the hand jog mode. If I press the offset, this will take me to the offset table, and then cursor down will take me to G54. And what I mentioned is when I move over with the cursor key, this number here is the one that I have written down on a sheet of paper. And it's not very elegant, but uh, basically I have the top of the one and a quarter inch parallels, top of the piranha jaws, and the top of half inch parallels written down. So when I switch from one to the other, I just type that number into the Z offset for the coordinate system that I'm working with. And most of the time I'm working with uh, G54. But if you're going to be working with multiple coordinate systems, you've got to make sure that you set the correct Z offset for each of those coordinate systems. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Heimer in. So to put the Heimer into the machine, I'm in hand jog, and what I need to do is press and hold. Actually, I'm going to raise the Z, so I'll go like this, bring the Z pretty much all the way to the top. And then I'm going to do tool release, so I have the tool out now, and in its place, I'm going to put in the Heimer. Now, to get accuracy, there's a pattern that I always follow. I want to make sure things are as repeatable as possible. So I press orient spindle and that will ensure that the spindle is an exact same rotation every single time. And then I can insert the Heimer into the spindle and then I'll press reset so the Heimer can rotate freely. Now at this point I can jog around and get the Heimer close to where I want to pick up the, uh, the coordinates and then just pick up in the X and Y. And each time I do that, and I've shown that in previous videos as well, I'm picking up the left side. Again, I want to make sure that when I have the cursor here in G54, 
which is the coordinate I'm setting. I want to make sure that the cursor is on X. And then I can bring this down. Let me move faster. And I'll bring it down so that it's uh, where I want it to be. And then I'm going to move to a smaller movement, which is one thousandth of an inch, while I bring it in. And then when I get really close, I'm going to move it to one ten thousandth of an inch. And then I'm going to bring it until it's exactly where I want. Now I have the left side, I can press the part zero set, and that will update this value here using this value. So right now this says 10.7 roughly. This says 10.8, so when I press this, that now says 10.8. It's now positioned for Y, so I can set this to one thousandths of an inch, back the Heimer off, move the Y to the back of the part, move the X in, bring the Y forward most of the way, and then when I get to the last uh, few thousandths of an inch, I switch again to ten thousandths of an inch, and then bring it in until it's right on the zero, and again press part set zero. This is now set up, so I will move the Heimer away. I'm going to bring it up, which I do by saying point 0.1, and then very carefully press just the Z, so I don't move the Heimer in either the X or Y direction. And I do that carefully, and I think through every time to try to make sure I don't break a Heimer tip. So I have my hand on the Heimer, I can press tool release, and now I can put this away and put the tool back in. Then I can press mem, and it's all set to run the program, and now I can just press uh, cycle start, which is down here below that you can't really see, once you have the door closed, and it's ready to go, except for a few more things. At this point, what I'd like to do, especially when this is a new program, this one isn't, so it should be okay, but it's still good to do this, is I'll uh, have my hands basically around here when I start it. So what I'm going to do is I'll press cycle start, and then I'm watching the tool to see what tool it picks. It's going to change to the correct tool, and then I'm going to press it to 25% rapids. When it gets closer, I'll press it to 25%. And I'm watching to make sure that it's actually heading up where in the part where I expect it to be at about the right height. If it isn't, then I press speed hold or emergency stop. It's running fine now, so because I've run this program before, I can actually leave it with the confidence that it's going to run correctly and it's not going to break any of the tools. This gives you an idea of what it looks like through the, uh, the glass. This is actually polycarbonate which scratches somewhat easily, uh, but there's also uh, some coolant that's on the window, so it's a little hard to see the part. Normally when I fill, film video sequences, it's using a camera that's over there inside that has an air blade to keep the coolant off the front of the lens. But, of course, I don't see that. This is what I see right here. So there's some useful information on here. I mean, one of them is that it's currently using G54 Tool 9. Uh, tool 9 happens to be a 1 32nd inch two flute flat end mill. It's running it at 30,000 RPM and 15 inches per minute, which you can run when you have a 30,000 RPM spindle. And this is the program that it's running through. There really isn't that much else on here that I look at. So once the job is finished, uh, then I need to take the part out of the vise. And this particular part here is one that uh, I'm working on. It's an idea for a product. This is injection molded, and I have actually am on the second cavity. I tried this version, I didn't like it, so I'm now on this version, and uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, but once I'm finished, what I usually like to do is, first of all, make sure that the speed handle is not on the vise. And then I like to change 
hand jog, and then T1. I always, uh, I always switch to uh, tool one, uh, and that's the one that I take out of the machine. One of the things I'm trying to do is tap all of the, uh, the tools into alignment to eliminate the runout. And if the orientation of the tool in the spindle changes a little bit, that does impact the runout as well. So what I'm trying to do is, is for all of the tools except for tool one, make sure that I leave them in the machine so that the alignment is always going to be the same each time it picks it up. So that's why I always remove tool one. And I just do tool release, it comes out and it goes into my drawer. Once that's done, I press emergency stop, power off, and that's it. All done, job finished, on to the next one. So as you saw from this process, Using a machine like a Haas instead of a, a Tormach or a, a Mach 3 hobby machine is not that different. There, yes, there are a lot of buttons that you need to learn, but um, it's actually not that bad. I mean, you've got an alphanumeric section and then you've got things that are purpose designed. And so effectively, it's like taking Pathpilot with all the different functions instead of having them on different tabs and a touchscreen there are dedicated buttons, which I think is really nice, but not everyone agrees with that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found something useful in it. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and if you're already a subscriber, if you hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll be notified when I have my next video up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.